Don Kryptonium feel like recording information videos this time. No fun, just pure informations. And Don Kryptonium read the comments and people expect that. Don Kryptonium got the comment, Don, what do you think about different layer one projects? I want to know your opinion, Don Kryptonium. I also want to know what is the difference between them. And Don Kryptonium is not the massive expert on layer ones, but Don Kryptonium will try his best to give the opinion on different blockchains. Why Don Kryptonium is in certain projects, not in other projects, but of course, whatever you listen. Uh, Don Kryptonium is not giving financial advices, only uh, philosophy advices. For example, Don Kryptonium got the comment yesterday from Witness101. Juno is garbage. It's like crappy parachain for Cosmos, which is also garbage. Some people might not realize why this comment is like this. So if you read parachain, you know this person is a huge fan of Polkadot ecosystem. And if you look at the Polkadot, it doesn't have great time. It doesn't have the great time. So if you are in Polkadot, massive believer, you will, you know, you will try to roast other things that do better than you. You know, this, this is just how it works. But like, I understand it. I don't blame it. But like, you know, word parachain. But I, I understand this needs explanation. So that's why I also explain how the different Cosmos blockchains will work because people think maybe these are parachains like the ones on the Polkadot. That's not the case. For help, I will also be using this uh, graph over here that compares some of the blockchains. And as I said, Don Kryptonium is going to focus on layer one. So we have layer one like Ethereum, the first one, the biggest one. And we have also, of course, Cardano. Some people still believe in that. So is the Cardano good? Or maybe you might be in the wrong ground here. Solana, that uh, everyone talks, next Ethereum, better than Ethereum, right? My friend coming to me asking, have you heard Solana is better than Ethereum? Avalanche, another one. We have Polka, Polygon, Cosmos, which is not layer one, but... Um, we will, we will try our best. Oh, it's dumping. Ha! <laughs> no good. No good. Anyway, uh, so Layer 1 is the smart contract platform on which you can deploy different smart contracts. That could be NFTs. Uh, that could be decentralized exchanges. That could be the different sort of communities. That's basically what this blockchain allows you. And Ethereum is the biggest here because it was the first one. But also you see as the technology progress, the Ethereum wasn't wasn't there yet. So the the transaction speed on Ethereum is not great. So if I send the tokens to you, it might take a few minutes maybe even more. And the problem is because it's so clogged, the fees are very high. So that's why people were come, going to Cardano, Solana, Avalanche and saying these are Ethereum killers. And I say there are no Ethereum killers, despite you thinking Solana is better. So what Ethereum does better, what Solana does better, right? So Ethereum we establish is slow and have very high fees. The good point for Ethereum is that is the largest developer community and larger user community at this moment. And that's why it's actually expensive and slow at this moment. But also the strength of Ethereum is that Ethereum was fairly decentralized because it went so early, you know, it has the usage. It wasn't really that many of the VC investors yet as it was later. So many people compare Ethereum to Solana, missing the points, right? Hey, Solana is faster. But if you have the ideology that Solana is just better and faster than Ethereum, that means every few years you would be moving to new blockchain because I can guarantee you every few years will be faster and faster blockchains popping out. And do you think it's the right thing of doing? Like uh, one year you have Ethereum, now you have Solana and you're like, hey, Solana is faster and better, you go to Solana. But after two years, the new blockchain will appear. Hey, we can do million transactions per second and people will not be paying attention if it does matter. If the cost of the fast transactions is maybe centralization, like you need to make this into account. So the cost for Solana speed 
and price is the fact that it's a rather centralized blockchain in the, you know, it has lower number of validators so it can um, have the higher throughput. A little similar would be to Avalanche and, and some others. Cardano will leave for a little bit later. And then we, we have this comparison. So we have Bitcoin, of course, the first generation blockchain. We have then Ethereum, which is second generation blockchain. The smart contract platforms, which is also like you, you have some others, you know, Avalanche and Solana, which is a layer one smart contract platforms. Uh, that are the second generation and you have blockchains like Cosmos or Polkadot that technically try to be layer zeros which we could consider as the third generation blockchain. So you have the speed of that and you can see of course I'm not talking to, about uh, Bitcoin that's separate conversation but the term is rather slow. Ripple is very fast, it's first generation, so maybe we shouldn't compare it to. Cardano, fairly slow, but these other blockchains are very fast. Then the other point is how many transactions per second they can do, and you can see um, Avalanche, Great, Elrond, Solana, blazing fast, blazing fast. But does it really matter at, at, at this level? We don't know. And you can see the cost of that, which is level of decentralization. I think it's really important in Avalanche is medium and it's quite low in Solana. So it means the Solana is the, in the hands of these few bigger investors and few validators that validate the network. I'm going to drop a link uh, to compare to this. And I tell you, Don Kryptonium is only in the cosmos, not because Don Kryptonium, like Don Kryptonium thinks is the best, but it doesn't mean it's the best, right? It's just something I feel is of use. And this is very important for me. I wasn't using Avalanche blockchain. I wasn't using Solana. I was using Ethereum, um, but I just feel familiar with cosmos and I have the conviction. So Don Kryptonium goes with conviction. It doesn't mean it's the best. I want to address this comment. So Juno is garbage, like creepy power chain for Cosmos, which is also garbage. The idea is that Polkadot as the layer zero allow you to create the power chains that will be using the security of the Polkadot ecosystem. But you at creating your own independent blockchain, you are kind of power chain that pay high tax to the Polkadot ecosystem. And I think the choice and comparison between Polkadot and Cosmos is this case is it, it doesn't really like matter if one is going to argue with another, hey, we better, this is creepy parachain, I like Polkadot more, that's better. The, the only one answer is where the developers are going to build. That all that matters. And from what I saw like with my own biases, that there is more of the interesting developers and projects deciding to deploy on the Cosmos. And the reason for that is because they don't pay this high tax and they don't use shared security. So this is why, for example, when to come to, like we can compare, right? Polkadot ecosystem. And when you go to Cosmos ecosystem, you have projects like Terra, which is like, considered to be amazing independent projects. You have crypto.coin, you have actually all the all the exchanges decided to build on using Cosmos SDK on Cosmos because this toolkit allowed them to be fully independent blockchain. So the question is, if the, there is exchange and they want to have independent blockchain, would they use Polkadot? which uh, will use shared security or they will focus on their own security. So this is why those uh, people would use uh, seem to use Cosmos, right? We have uh, like quite big independent projects like Terra Osmosis, Torchain, Secret Network, Kadena that got a lot of uh, a lot of traction. Of course, Anchor Protocol that belongs to Terra, Akash Network and many others. But when I go to Polkadot, you see Chainlink is not really like Polka, you have Polkadot Kusama. And a lot of this project that are built on the project doesn't like really create that much value as it benefits the Polkadot itself. And also a lot of this project seems to be projects that like really did not do well. They launched very high and there was massive sell-offs. So the the interest like the the 
ecosystem here look more interesting for Cosmos for me. And from what I see, many talented developers, they actually seem to prefer to deploy on Cosmos with their own independent blockchain. So no, the Cosmos chains are not parachains. The Cosmos chains are its own blockchains, its own independent blockchains where you can also build your own layer ones. You can build your own version of Ethereum, your own version of Sol whatever on the Cosmos, right? The, your own version of layer ones. So then uh, I will compare it to two other, uh, you know, I want to do Avalanche ecosystem, which recently gets some popularity. Of course, Binance Coin is built on Cosmos, but it, it integrates, right? So it's uh, it integrates. So we have Solana. And where is the Radium, which is the version of Uniswap for for Solana and in Avalanche, we should have Pangolin, which didn't, okay. So this is the Uniswaps. I, I think it's important to, to use it. This is basically the, the Uniswaps of different ecosystems. Can I launch up? You, you can see, you can, you can swap. So that would be essentially cheaper and uh, faster. It basically, looks the same. So I think it's really about your own preference. What do you like to use? I don't think Solana is bad. It's centralized. I don't think Avalanche is bad. I think it's fairly centralized. Um, so that's how, that's basically how it looks. But yet the most interesting project being built for me are in the Cosmos. That's why I personally choose Cosmos. That That's all that there is to it. And also important to, I think, talk about our a uh, big elephant in the room, which is Cardano. And I couldn't understand, and that would include my friends, why some people would believe so heavily in Cardano. And I fail to understand this till today, honestly. I don't know why YouTubers in 2021 all were shitting Cardano. It got me thinking, the reason for that is that the YouTubers don't necessarily are blockchain, you can see this echo, it's a joke. It made me think that at first the YouTubers are basically influencers. It doesn't mean they really know where most developers build. It doesn't mean they, they, they know the trends and Cardano was sure the trend, but it created the bubble, I'm sorry to say it, but it created basically over 50 billion market cap at the certain point with no ecosystem existing. And there is still massive risk because we have this Sundeswap, which is basically a um, Uniswap version of Cardano. But the question is, will it be fast? Will it be usable? Will the transaction happen fast? Uh, that, that's really important. So we have Radium, transactions work perfect. We have Pangolin, transactions work perfect. JunoSwap, seems transactions will, will work perfect. We have Osmosis Zone also, like works absolutely perfect. I love it. With big ecosystem on independent projects, not just the smart contracts that have been deployed on Avalanche or Radium, right? And the question is, will this project will be like fast enough? Because if transactions will be slow and failing, I think uh, Cardano might be in the massive issues. So that's my like Sigma leak. As I said, I'm not expert in many because I'm no expert in Polkadot. You probably know that. I'm no expert in Cardano. I'm no expert with Solana and Avalanche, but like this is my opinion and I have my own biases. And that's the reason why I'm in the Cosmos ecosystem. I like it. If I'm right, I don't know. Will I make money on it? I don't know. It's important to understand the trends. You see, like if you in it for making money, the trend is everything actually. So there was the rhetoric of Solana or Avalanche a few months ago and people made great money out of it. But of course, like I don't think this trend sort of will continue. Hey, there will be newer, faster thing because that doesn't make sense. It's basically making the flow from one thing to other to other. And you need an ecosystem that will capture the value instead of just new ecosystems where the value will be jumping from one to another. That's that's my that's my philosophy in the blockchain. I rather want conviction, something I would believe in. Um, I spend a lot of time on Twitter trying to search. By the way, follow me on Twitter. Follow Don Kryptonium on Twitter. 
also I've been just checking uh, right now I'm checking at the faces I hope I can deliver more of them but Don Kryptonium is thinking of dropping the NFT that would basically serve as the DAO of the community I'd love to put this for free in the hands of the Don Kryptonium community so let me know what you think how we can do it um, but I think it could work because I, I think Don Kryptonium has so many different uh, projects, so many different uh, emotional expressions that come uh, to crypto space. And, you know, uh, we love the emotions. We lo love the feelings. So this is why I think this drop could make sense for Don Kryptonium. Thank you for watching, uh, dear people. Dear Don Kryptonium followers, dear Don Kryptonium believers, uh, Don Kryptonium is now out. Don't argue with Don Kryptonium. You don't need that. Uh, go for a walk. I, I know sometimes you might be angry when it drops, but this is just the crypto. This is not the real life. And with this message, I will leave you here. Remember, as the Hussein said, Black people die every day, so will we. Till the next time.